Today's adventure starts at the fairy village. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Papa. I made you breakfast. Oh, thank you, Strawberry. Look at your card. To the nicest Papa in the world. How sweet. And no work for you today. You get the day off. That sounds good, but what shall I do? You can play. Who will I play with? The other daddies, of course. It's Father's Day for every daddy. Morning, Dad. Breakfast. Oh, what a lovely card, Ben. It's a picture of me waving from the elf truck. <gasps> the truck! I've got to make my food deliveries. No, Mr Elf. You've got the day off. But, but... Don't worry. Someone else is doing your deliveries. Oh, really? Who? Food delivery! Come and get it! What? Nanny Plum? Hello, Mr Elf. I'm in charge of your deliveries today. So you just sit back and relax. Sit back and relax with Nanny doing my deliveries. Where's the break? Oops. Oh, dear. Morning time. Hey, what? Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Ah, breakfast in bed. If only every day could start like this. But every day does start like this. You always have breakfast in bed. Ah, yes. Read your card, Daddy. You're the best Daddy in the universe. <laughs> and today you can do whatever you like. Yes, you're not the king today. You're just my Daddy. Marvellous. Now, make sure Mrs Fig's egg is nice and fresh. And don't forget the orange for Mrs Peach. Right, a peach for Mrs Orange. No, an orange for Mrs Peach. Yes, yes, whatever. Hey, hey, you forgot the egg. Hello there. It's the king. Hooray! Oh, I'm not the king today. I'm just a humble daddy, like you lot. And today, all the daddies have to play. Yes, here's a ball. Oh -ho! To you, Dad. To you, Your Majesty. To you. Oops. Yeah! It's Redbeard the Elf Pirate. Which scurvy scoundrel will be shooting cannonballs at me now? Uh, that would be me. Oh, begging your pardon, King Thistle. That's quite all right. I'm just a normal daddy today. All the daddies have the day off. Because it's Father's Day. Ah, I know. And that's why I brought this here card. Hello, Nigel. Hello, Fred. Seen Dad today. Hello. I've come to join in the fun. I'm sorry, wise old elf, but you have to be a daddy to have the day off. Actually, Holly, I am a daddy. I have three sons. Three sons? Yes, but I don't talk about it much. It's a bit uh, embarrassing. My eldest boy ran off to sea to make his fortune. He has a big red beard and he's a, a pirate. Happy Father's Day, Dad! Thank you, son. And from me too, Dad. Thank you. Redbeard, you never said the wise old elf was your dad. Well, pirates don't like to admit they have mummies and daddies. True, but they all do. And that's a fact. Captain Squid. Aha! What are you doing here, you scurvy old rogue? Keeping an eye on you, you blackguard, so you don't steal my treasure. Scallywag! Scoundrel! Ha-ha! Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thank you, son. What? Captain Squid is your son, too? That's, that's right! Oh, two of my son's pirates. But at least I have one son who's sensible. Guess what, Dad? I have decided to be a Viking. Ha-ha! Oh. <laughs> Food delivery! Oh, good. I ordered an egg. I haven't got an egg, but I've got an orange. Have you brought my orange? Sorry, Mrs Peach. Just out of oranges. Here's some broccoli instead. I don't like broccoli. Oh. But it's good for you. This is a lettuce, but I ordered a cabbage. Oh, for goodness sake. You're all so grumpy. We're only grumpy because you muddled our delivery. It's not like when Mr Elf does it. Oh, here. 
You can help yourselves. <laughs> Food delivery. Bye. <laughs> to you, Ben. To you, Dad. Let's see how high I can kick the ball. <laughs> ben? Hello, Mum. Did you kick this ball? Um... No, it was, uh, me. Oh, dear. This Father's Day game has got a bit silly, hasn't it? It's not as bad as last Mother's Day. Yes, you mummies know how to party. <laughs> Do you know what time it is? Yes, it's Mother's Day! <laughs> yes, maybe we did go a bit wild. Come on, daddies. Let's play in the meadow. Hooray! Let's play basketball. We'll need two nets. We'll need a referee. dum de dum de dee dee doo Nanny, we need a referee for our game. OK, what's the game? Basketball. Never heard of it. One team has to throw the ball into this net and the other team has to throw the ball into that net. And you can only... OK, OK, I don't need to know all the little details. Let's start. But I haven't finished telling you the rules. Yes, yes. Go on, Ben. Throw it in the net. Goal! Nanny, in basketball, you don't say goal. You say... Yes, yes. I'm awarding you five points. But that's too many. I decide the rules. I'm the referee. <laughs> Carry on. Remember, Daddy, you mustn't kick the ball. Oh, I see. I'll use magic then. Aha! <laughs> Goal! You can't use magic. It's Father's Day. What has magic got to do with Father's Day? Yellow card for being naughty. But I'm the king. Red card for talking back. Play on! <laughs> to that team. No, no, that's too many points. Oh, this will take forever. Let's make it easier. What if the ball had legs? <laughs> then he could score on his own. Hooray! This is too easy. OK, I'll make it harder. I'll give the next legs too. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Why don't you add some dragons? For good measure. Oh, that's a good idea, wise old elf. Dragons! <laughs> ah, so this is basketball. What a fun game. Well done, wise old elf, for suggesting it. But, but, but... Game over. What's the score, Nanny? What score would you like? Can we have a hundred million? OK, a hundred million points to this team. Hooray! We have a hundred million too. Yes, a hundred million points to that Hooray! team. Oh, that means it's a draw. Hooray! Ah, oh, what a great Father's Day this has been. It'll be hard getting back to my work tomorrow. Yes, it'll be hard getting back to my food deliveries again. Oh, the deliveries. Uh, I'm afraid it all went a bit wrong today. Mrs Peach wanted an orange and Nanny gave her broccoli. And I think I gave Mr Egg a peach. Or was it the other way round? It'll take weeks to sort this out. I'm quite looking forward to it. I really enjoyed Father's Day. It's a shame it's over. There's still a tiny bit of Father's Day left, Papa. I'll read you a bedtime story. <laughs> Thank you, Strawberry. Ready? Once upon a time... A big bad wolf came along to the straw house. And he huffed and he puffed. And then there was a loud knock on the door. Who could that be? said the princess. With a yo-ho-ho, -ho, the pirates set sail across the deep blue sea. Does the story have to be about pirates? Not about pirates. What else could the story be about? How about Vikings? Oh, OK. Vikings, then. The Vikings set sail across the deep blue sea. And on the way, they met a pirate! Yo-ho-ho! -ho! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
It's not bad being a father. Not bad at all. Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Visiting the Marigolds. Hi, Ollie. Do you want to come and play? I'd like to play, Ben, but I can't. We're going to visit King and Queen Marigold. They're a bit snooty. I'm glad I'm not going. I wish I wasn't going. Maybe your mum will let you stay and play with me. Mummy, can I play with Ben today? What a good idea. Hooray! Ben can come too. Oh. oh. That's all right, isn't it, Mr Elf? Oh, yes. Go off and enjoy yourself, Ben. See you later. Bye. Oh, you're coming too, are you? OK. Magic car, drive on. This is fun. A magic car. Yes, it uses fairy dust to make it go. Cool. I want you all on your best behaviour today. Yes, Queen Thistle. King and Queen Marigold's home will be full of very precious things. Horrible, but precious. So you mustn't touch anything. Visiting King and Queen Marigold sounds like hard work. It'll be exhausting. Here we are. King and Queen Marigold's castle. Oh, what a horrible building. Such bad taste. It's beautiful. Cool castle. Hello and welcome. Holly, you remember King and Queen Marigold? Hello, Hello Princess, Princess Holly. Holly. Hello, and this is my best friend Ben. You've met him before. Of course. The charming little goblin. I'm not a goblin. I'm an elf. Oh, an elf? How exotic. Did you have a pleasant journey? It must be so nice to leave your little kingdom behind for a day. Tell us honestly, what do you think of our castle? Honestly, it looks like a complete... It's very nice. I wish we had a castle like this, Mummy. Oh, before we had it rebuilt in plastic, it was made of stone. Imagine, how primitive. Our castle is made of stone. Ah, but you live in an old-fashioned castle. Mm, it must be very uncomfortable. Not really. Oh, you've brought your ladybird. Ugh. Down, Gaston, down! Oh, that means he likes you. Charmed, I'm sure. Let's go inside. We'll give you the tour. Can Gaston come too? As long as he wipes his feet. Yes, if you could... All wipe your feet. And please don't touch anything. And if you could, try not to breathe too heavily. We've got lots of precious things. <laughs> As you can see, we've turned the idea of the hallway on its head. Ridiculous. Wow! It's all upside down. Amazing. Oh, where's Gaston gone? There's Gaston. He's walking on the ceiling. No, Daddy. Gaston's walking on the upside down floor. Clever Gaston. Hmm, yes, and I see he didn't wipe his feet. <laughs> Nanny, clean it up. I'm not your servant. That's right, Nanny. You're my servant. Thank you, Your Majesty. So, clean it up, Nanny. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Muddy footprints, away you go. Good. Now, where were we? There are 100 rooms in our castle. What do you do with all those rooms? We fill them, my boy, with things. This is our collection of pebbles. Pebbles? Oh, there is nothing quite as wonderful as a well-polished pebble. Oh, indeed. 
What do they do? They're beautiful. Please don't touch them. We don't want them to get sticky. Children always have sticky hands. No, we don't. Yes, you do. Do you think the pebbles look beautiful, King Thistle? What? Oh, yes. Very, uh, pebbly. This way. Ugh! Green fly. Mm. Good boy, Gaston. He won't be needing dinner now. Oh, I see you found our pet green fly. Lucinda, Gucci, and Timmy. Oh, but where is Timmy? Ah. Timmy! 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 Hmm, perhaps he's gone for a walk. Timmy! Gaston, spit Timmy out. <coughs> Ah, Timmy. <laughs> oh, 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 playing hide and seek, were we? <laughs> now you may find the next room a little chilly. <laughs> it's freezing in here. Yes, this room must be kept well below freezing temperature at all times. All these lovely things are made of ice. They look very beautiful, Queen Marigold. Yes, they're, uh, cool. Please don't touch. Are they made with magic? Oh, no. That would be too easy. They're made from ice that froze over a thousand years ago. Ooh. And hand-carved by Norwegian mining pixies. These sculptures are one of a kind and simply irreplaceable. Ooh, a swan, that's nice. I like swans. Oh, dear. Nanny, what have you done? You've broken the swan's head off. It's all right. I'll magic another one. Abracadabra, make me a bird. Ice thingy. Nanny! That's not a swan. It looks like a hen. Or a duck, maybe. It looks lovely. I like ducks. This way, do keep up. This is our finest and most treasured collection of all antique toys. Amazing. You must play in here all the time. I could play here forever. This monkey is over a hundred years old. <laughs> and this clown is over 200 years old. <laughs> Apparently, they were made at the Elf Factory by someone called the Wise Old Elf. We know the Wise Old Elf. <gasps> you know the Wise Old Elf? What's he like? He's wise. He's old. He's... He's a grumpy old elf that's a bit clever. This is my favourite toy. A clockwork fairground ride. But sadly, it's broken. Don't worry, I can mend it. I don't think so. It needs to be seen by an expert. Elves are experts, and I'm an elf. <laughs> <laughs> and I can help you, Ben. Rawr! Don't touch! These toys must not be touched by children. We'll have to touch it to mend it. Um, okay. There, it's mended. Castle isn't boring at all. Yes, 
actually, it's quite fun, isn't it? Choo choo! Today's adventure starts at Gaston's cave. <laughs> Gaston's birthday. <laughs> Come on, Gaston, wiggle your legs. <laughs> Gaston loves wiggling his legs. <laughs> oh, has Gaston got one new spot today? I'm not sure. Do ladybirds get new spots? Ladybirds get a new spot for every birthday. Wow, Gaston's got lots of spots, so he must have had lots of birthdays. <laughs> and lots of birthday parties. <laughs> oh, have you never had a birthday party, Gaston? <laughs> That's really sad. Daddy, Mummy, it's not fair. Gaston's never had a birthday party. Well, I wish I'd never had a birthday party. Oh, darling, it's your birthday tomorrow and you'll enjoy it. No, I won't. This year I don't want a party. Oh, Daddy, you say that every year. Well, this year I mean it. I don't like my parties with the elf band singing about me getting older. You're lucky you're getting a party, Daddy. Gaston's never even had one. <sighs> then give my party to Gaston. I'm going to have a bath. Oh, same every year. So grumpy about his birthday, but he always enjoys it in the end. Come on, let's go and see how the elf band are getting on. Hello, wise old elf. We've come to hear the song you're doing for Daddy's birthday. Ah, yes. We've come up with a good one this year. I think King Thistle will be very pleased. King Thistle is old, 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 and today he's even older. King Thistle is old, 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 old. Very sweet. And I, Redbeard the Elf Pirate, will fire myself out of this cannon in the King's honour. But the King's birthday isn't until tomorrow. This is a dry run to see if it works. Light the fuse! Lighting the fuse. Whee! Hurrah! Where do you think he'll land? Who knows? Ah. Oh. I do like a nice, relaxing bath. It's good to get away from all that talk about birthdays. Happy birthday, Your Majesty! Ah! Get out of my bath! It's not my birthday! I know! This is a dry run! Now, see here! I don't want any birthday stuff! Ah, that's what you say every year! Look! I don't want a cake, I don't want a song, and I don't want a pirate in my bath! So, you really don't want a party? No! I don't want a party! Not this year, not next year, not any year! Never! No! Party! And that's when he started shouting. He was a tiny bit angry. So he really doesn't want a party? No. Oh, Dear, what will we do with the presents we wrapped? And the cakes I baked? And our new song? And me cannon! We've got a whole birthday party ready and no one to give it to! Um, Daddy did say Gaston could have his party. <coughs> Poor Gaston has never had a birthday party. <coughs> Would you like a birthday party, Gaston? <coughs> Then it's decided it will be Gaston's birthday party. <laughs> Hooray! We'll need a new song for Gaston from the Elf Band. Yes, Your Majesty. And I'll bake Gaston some cakes. And I'll fire myself out of me cannon in Gaston's honour. He'll appreciate it. Not like somebody whose name I won't mention. The King, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the best party ever. What do you think Gaston would like for his birthday present? A squeaky toy. Very good. 
Now to wrap it. Spotty wrapping paper. Brilliant. Hello. I finished my bath. Uh-oh. What are you doing? Relax, darling. It's nothing to do with you. A likely story. It really isn't. So stop fussing. Uh, fine. Mmm. Can I smell cakes? I thought so. What's going on, Nanny? Are you baking cakes? Yes, I am. These cakes had better not be for me. Ho, ho, ho. They're not. Now, Shoo, go on. I haven't got time to talk to you. I suppose it is nice that they want to give me a party so much. Ho, ho, ho. What shall we do for Gaston's birthday card? Let's draw a picture of Gaston. Good idea. Hello, Holly. Hello, Daddy. We're making a birthday card. I don't suppose it's for me, is it? No. No, of course not. Ha! I don't think my face is that red. And I don't have black spots. I told you, Daddy. It's not for you. <laughs> oh, yes. So you did. Ben! Hello, Dad. Do you want to help deliver the party invitations? Yes, please. Off we go. Oh, they're delivering invitations for my party. How sweet. Special delivery. Invitations to Gaston's birthday. Gaston's party is tomorrow at the Frog Pond. Are you all coming? Yes. yes. Of course we are. Where next? We mustn't forget Gaston. It is his party. <laughs> there you go, Gaston. An invitation to your very own birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Gaston loves eating letters. So, are you coming to your party, Gaston? Uh. I think that means yes. Ah. Oh. How are the preparations going for my party tomorrow? Your party? You're not having a party. Ho, <laughs> ho! I know your little plan. What little plan? You told us not to plan anything. Ha, <laughs> ha! That's right. I did. Good night, then. Good night. <laughs> <sighs> oh, no one here. I expect they're all downstairs. <laughs> no birthday cards? Where is everybody? Of course, they're all secretly hiding outside, ready to shout, Happy Birthday, King Thistle! <coughs> oh, there's no one here. They must be having the party somewhere else. Ah, that sounds like a party. I'd better go and find out where it is. Not much of a party without me, the birthday boy. <laughs> is here, even Gaston's brother Tony with Pam and the little ladybirds Amber, ruff, Emerald ruff, and Keith. Happy birthday, Gaston. Here's your present. Ruff, ruff. It's a squeaky toy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm sorry, do you have an invitation? I don't need one. I'm King Thistle. King Thistle, King Thistle. No, your name's not on here. What? But it's my party. No, it's not, mate. It's Gaston the Ladybird's party. What? Take it easy, fella. It's supposed to be a happy occasion. It's all right. He's with us. What's going on? Where's my birthday party? You said you didn't want a party. I know I said that, but what I really meant was I do want a party. Oh, Daddy. You are silly. Yes, I know. Oh, well, I'm sure Gaston won't mind sharing his party with you. <coughs> Gaston, be nice and share your present with King Thistle. <coughs> Gaston, that's not how to behave on your birthday. <coughs> For me? How kind. <coughs> it's a squeaky toy. <coughs> yes, for you to chase. And now it's time for the birthday song. He's round and he's red with big black spots. How dare they? It's about Gaston, Daddy. He rolls on his back and he barks a lot. He's Gaston the Ladybird. That was 
really fun. Well, well. Maybe birthday parties aren't that bad. What's that noise? Happy birthday! Ah! Hooray! Happy birthday, Daddy. Oh, oh, thank you, Holly. Today's adventure starts at the little castle. The party! Come on, everyone. We've got to get ready for the party. Party? Daisy and Poppy's birthday party. <gasps> oh, no! Party! Party! Two magical toddlers are bad enough. But when all their little friends turn up, it's... Terrible! <laughs> I've got it. We'll have the party, but we won't invite any guests. Da 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 da! I've sent out all the party invites, and everybody's coming. Oh, who's coming? There's little Tarquin. Tarquin like party. Oh no, Tarquin is a monster. And there's Raspberry. Not my little sister. Even her wand is rude. A nettle elf. <gasps> My little sister. She's got a stinging nettle in her hat. And it stings when you touch it. Nettle elf is the naughtiest of the lot. What do you expect? She's got a pirate for an uncle. Yes. Redbeard the elf pirate. <sighs> This party is going to be a disaster. Don't worry. I've got it all planned. We'll have magic games, followed by my magic show, and ending with magic jelly. Magicy, magicy. <laughs> I was wrong. The party's not going to be a disaster. It's going to be a catastrophe. Thank you, Your Majesty. I know, King Thistle. You could have an elf party. A what? An elf party has no magic at all. But what about my magic show? The toddlers love a magic show. We have the great wizardo, an elf conjurer. He doesn't do real magic. It's just tricks. I like it, Ben. It sounds very safe. Yeah, and boring. Exactly. Nanny Plum, call this great wizardo and tell him we've got children we want to bore. I mean, entertain. Ugh. Very well, Your Majesty. <laughs> Welcome to the party. Tarquin like party. Bye-bye, Tarquin. Be good. Yes, Mama. <sniffs> oh. Hello, Nettle. Ow! That stings! Nanny Plum! Me fruity pancake. Ugh. Enjoy the party, Nettle. I'll be back to pick you up later. <laughs> oh, settle down, children, please. <laughs> the great Wizardo. That's just the wise old elf. I'm not just the wise old elf. I'm also a children's entertainer. Oh, carry on then. These children are a bit of a handful, especially when they do magic. There won't be any magic at this party. I'll put the toddler's wands into the library, where they can't cause any trouble. Very clever. Let's get this party started. Hooray! Musical statues. When the music stops, you have to stand as still as a statue. Aha! Raspberry, I saw you move. And you, Nettle. That's because they haven't been turned to stone yet. Ah! Strawberry, you've magic them into real statues. Of course. That's how we fairies play musical statues. This is not a fairy party. Turn them back to normal. OK. The big children's ones are going into the library with the others. Now it's time to play Stick the Tail on the Donkey. Here's the donkey. Looks like a cabbage. Or a duck. It's a donkey. Now, I will blindfold Nettle Elf and she'll try to stick this tail on the donkey. <laughs> Ow! She stung 
me again. It's a stupid game anyway. You need a big dragon to stick the tail on. Ah! Oh, looks like the twins' party has started. Ah! Get rid of the dragon! All right. Just trying to liven the party up a bit. I'm putting the grown-ups ones in the library too. Now for my conjuring show. Hooray! Queen Sissel, please take a card. <laughs> Don't show me. What is your card? Um, the two of hearts. Your card is the two of hearts. That's the worst trick I've ever seen. I thought it was rather good. How's it done? For my next trick, I will turn myself into a mouse. Ooh. You little ones need to wait behind this door for a moment. How do you change yourself into a mouse? I put these ears on and this nose, then I... Um, was it a good idea putting the toddlers in the library? What? It's the same room you put all the wands in. Ah. <laughs> Don't worry, the great wizardo will sort this out. I'll show them my mouse trick. That will surprise them. They'll be surprised how bad it is. So it might work. Look, children, I've turned myself into a... Mousy, mousy! Squeak! Wow, that's not a bad costume. Ah! Uh... The toddlers have magic the wise old elf into a real mouse. Squeak! Can someone please magic me back into an elf? No, we can't do any magic because somebody put all the wands in the library. Ah, yes. Squeak! Ahoy, me hearties! I'm here to pick up my niece, Meryl. Oh, uh... Actually, the party's not quite over yet. <laughs> no? The toddlers are in the library with the dangerous spell books. They've got all the magic wands. And they've magic the wise old elf into a mouse. Squeak! Sounds like a fun party. Oh, no. It's gone quiet. They're up to something. Let's take a look. Hello? Hello? There's no one here. Just our wands. Oh, it's good to have you back again. Uh, Nanny, now you have your wand again, would you mind, um... Of course, oh great wizardo. Silly old elf, back to yourself. Oh, so where be the poor little toddlers? I was afraid of this. Daisy and Poppy have found the secret passageway. Ooh. Where does the secret passageway go? To the secret room. Oh. I never knew we had a secret room. That's because it's secret. The room contains a magical force that must never be let out. So, not a good room for toddlers to be in, then. <laughs> I hear the sound of excited little ones and something else. We must not enter. Honestly, what a lot of fuss about a terrible magical force of unimaginable power. I'll handle this. Good luck, me brave little pumpkin. Go off! <laughs> what can you see? Terrible things! Redbeard to the rescue! <laughs> Here be the toddlers. <laughs> Plum! Here she be! You're safe now, my plum pudding. I've seen many a terrible thing at sea, but nothing, nothing as bad as what I saw in that room. That's why we tend to keep the door locked. <laughs> Good. The party's over. It all went rather well, I thought. But what about the jelly? We haven't had magic jelly yet. Magic jelly! Magic jelly! All right, Nanny, but please don't make too much this time. <laughs> Look, magic jelly! That's good. The party must be almost over. Ah, <laughs> oh, raspberry. Have you had a nice time? Yes, Mummy. Tarquin, say thank you for having me. 
Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Goodbye, Nettle. Ow! She stung me again. It's Raspberry's birthday next. We hear you've got a children's entertainer who's good with toddlers. Yes. Here he is. The great Wizardo. Um, I... Wonderful. See you all at Raspberry's party then. <laughs> party, party! <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the Great Elf Tree on Christmas Eve. Ben and Holly's Christmas. Hello. Ah! Big people! Hello, wise old elf. It's me, Father Christmas. Father Christmas! Why are you dressed like that? I'm in disguise. Top secret and all that. Ooh! I've popped down to check how you elves and fairies are doing with the Christmas preparations. Everything is in hand, Mr Christmas. We've made all the toys for you to give to the children of the world. Dolls' houses, footballs and teddy bears. Lovely. And Mr Elf has been flying day and night, delivering the toys to you at the North Pole. Good, good. And how about the Christmas crackers? The fairies are in charge of the crackers. Hello, everyone. We have a visitor. Ho, ho, ho. Ah, of course. You don't know who I am. I'm in disguise. Your father Christmas. Oh. Yes. Mr. Christmas, would you like to test a cracker? Wow, that's loud. Yes, Nanny Plum is in charge of the bangs. Let's bang, please, Nanny. What? But the bang is the best bit. That's why we do the cracker making underground. Let's try the paper hat. How do I look? <laughs> Very Christmassy. And we've got some good cracker jokes this year. What do you get if you cross a kangaroo and a sheep? A woolly jumper. <laughs> Daddy, that's awful. Cracker jokes are meant to be awful. That's why we get King Thistle to write them. <laughs> and the cracker toys. This year, we've made telephones to put in the crackers. A tiny telephone. Does it really work? No, it's just a lump of plastic. And down there, all the bits and bobs are put into the crackers by magic. Mr Elf has delivered loads of Christmas crackers to the shops already. Good. The big people pick them up and put them on the shelves. And they have no idea the crackers were made by elves and fairies. Jolly good work. And how are the Christmas trees? The Pine Elves have been growing them all year. Hello! We've come to see the Christmas trees. Ho, ho, ho! Hello, Father Christmas. Like the outfit, what fashion is it exactly? Uh, it's meant to be a disguise. So many lovely Christmas trees. Yes! Pine Elves are good at growing Christmas trees. And we're Pine Elves! <laughs> Ooh, this pine tree has little windows in it. Yes, we live in a great oak tree. The Pine Elves live in a great pine tree. All Elves live in trees. Goodness knows why. How do you get all the Christmas trees to the shops? Once a year, the big people come and cut the trees down. And they have no idea the Christmas trees were grown by us little people. But what if they cut down the great pine tree? There's no danger of that. The great pine tree is too big. Everything seems in hand. Thank you, elves and fairies. Our pleasure. I need to get back to the North Pole and change clothes. I can't deliver presents dressed like this. Bye. Bye-bye, Father Christmas. Now, where did I leave my sleigh? 
The big people should be here any moment to cut the trees down. Here they come! They mustn't see us. Everyone into the great pine tree. You all stay down here. I'm going upstairs to take a look. Close the shutters. Good. Now we're completely hidden. Right, men. Let's cut these Christmas trees down. Timber! Problem. We Pine Elves are used to the noise. Uh, that was loud. I think they've finished. Excellent. They've taken all the trees. Uh, even the great pine tree. Ah, where's the upstairs gone? The big people have taken it. Don't worry. The wise old elf will sort this out. Uh, where is the wise old elf? It's for you. Oh, hello. Your Majesty. It's a disaster. The great pine tree has been cut down with all the pine elves inside. Well, if they will insist on living in a Christmas tree, what do they expect? <laughs> Your Majesty, that is not helpful. Honestly, why can't they live like normal people in a castle? Nanny Plum, tea break. Ooh, thank you, Queen Thistle. Cracker testing is thirsty work. <gasps> That's the sound of big feet. The big people are coming. They mustn't see the little castle. Oh, yes. Um, uh, I know. I'll shrink it down. Shrink, little castle. Shrink, shrink, shrink. <laughs> Good. With any luck, the big people won't notice it now. Ah, Nanny Plum! You've shrunk me as well! Uh... Oh, here come the big people. Now, where did I leave my sleigh? Oh, what's this? A toy castle. I didn't know the elves were making these. I'm not a toy. I'm Queen Thistle. What's that squeaky noise? Oh, well, I'll just take this toy to the North Pole myself, or else some poor child won't get their Christmas present. Uh, Mr. Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! Away we go! Oh, dear. Home at last. Uh, where is my castle? Uh, somehow it sort of shrunk itself down. And Father Christmas thought it was a toy and he's taken it to the North Pole. What? Well, if some people will live in houses that look like little toy castles, what do they expect? Hmm, <laughs> the Queen will sort this out. Queen Thistle! We have a little problem up here that we might need a hand sorting out. Where is the Queen? Uh, on her way to the North Pole. Somehow she shrank down inside the castle. I see. I'll just have to sort this mess out myself then. Let's give Father Christmas a ring. Ah, good. A phone. Ah! Put me down. Ah! Get me out of this cracker. Still one more box of crackers? Let's get them loaded. Taking a long time. I'm the king! <laughs> oh, another box of crackers. It's funny, we never see who delivers them. Ah, oh, trapped in a cracker! <sighs> oh well, at least I can phone for help. Ah, oh, yes, it's not a phone. It's a lump of plastic. Get me out of this cracker! Trees! Last delivery of Christmas trees! Wow, that's a big Christmas tree. Stacked up in a garden centre. How embarrassing. Ah, 
the North Pole. I need to get ready for my Christmas deliveries. One last toy to be wrapped. I'm not a toy. I'm Queen Thistle. Ah! Help! Let me out! I'm a queen. King Thistle trapped in a cracker? The wise old elf stuck in a Christmas tree? Queen Thistle? Today's adventure starts at the Great Elf Tree on Christmas Eve. Snow! Come on, elves. Let's get the elf plane loaded. Radio, wind the engine. Roger that, Mr. Elf. Wind the engine. Radio. Hi, boys. Hi, girls. What's happening? Dad has an important job to do. What kind of job? He's flying to the North Pole. The North Pole? Yes. We're making our final delivery of toys to Father Christmas. Ooh. Flight 1000, ready for takeoff. Flight 1000, you are cleared for takeoff. Roger that, Control. to Father Christmas. Well, who do you think makes all Father Christmas's toys? Um, elves? That's right, us elves. Ah. Elves work all year deep underground in the elf factory making toys. Then, in December, Ben's dad flies to the North Pole and delivers the toys to Father Christmas. Does he land at the North Pole and meet Father Christmas? No, he never lands. He drops the toys by parachute. Then Father Christmas wraps the toys up and delivers them to the children of the world. All the children? Even our friend Lucy? Oh, yes. Even Lucy. I love Christmas. And I love snow. Me too. I wish it was snowing now. Yes. It's Christmas Eve. When's it going to snow? Maybe it's time for a weather forecast. Weather forecast? Yes. We can use my elf weather detector. Wow. So can this machine tell if it's going to snow? Of course. How does it work? I listen to the weather through this giant ear trumpet. It's so sensitive, I can hear a butterfly flapping its wings in Africa. Can you hear any butterflies? Ah, don't talk loudly into the trumpet. Sorry, wise old elf. Now, please stay quiet. Ah, interesting. Is it a butterfly? No, I can hear weather. What sort of weather? Uh, <clears throat> there's a chance of sun or rain with clear skies or clouds. Is it going to snow? I can say it certainly might, but then again, it might not. Oh. I know. Let's ask Nanny Plum if it's going to snow. Why ask Nanny Plum? Nanny can tell the future. Ha! This I must see. <laughs> Nanny Plum! Nanny Plum! You can tell the future, can't you? I certainly can. Can you tell if it's going to snow today? Yes, I'll use my special snow forecasting globe. Oh, ho, ho. I see. You gaze into the crystal ball and it tells our fortune, I suppose. <laughs> no, you just shake it, like this. There we are. It'll snow today. Hooray! Stop, stop, stop. How on earth can that thing predict the weather? It's never been wrong. What if you shook it in the summer? Well, you don't shake it in the summer, obviously. That would be silly. Well, you can't tell exactly when it's going to snow, can you? Yes, I can. It's going to snow 
now. Abracadabra! That's cheating. No, it's not. Make it snow! Nanny's made it snow. Let's go and see it. <laughs> <laughs> what? But where is the snow? Yeah! Nanny Plum! It's snowing inside. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> snow! Snow! <laughs> Let's play snowballs! Ooh, Nanny Plum, it's snowing in the sitting room. Is this your doing? Yes, it is. Inside is for sitting in armchairs and reading. Outside is for snow. Oh, inside, outside, whatever. Nanny Plum, you're fired. <laughs> Don't be silly. I'm taking away your wand until you learn how to control your spells better. But what about the snow? Not another word. Aww. Everyone out. Now Daddy's taken Nanny Plum's wand, she won't be able to magic any snow. Now we won't have any snow for Christmas. There's always a chance it might snow anyway. I can hear something. Is it snow? No, it's the elf plane. Dad's back from the North Pole. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the last delivery done. Dad, did you see snow? Yes, lots of it. Enough snow to last me a lifetime. Now you've finished your work, Mr Elf. Are you on holiday? Holiday? Good gracious, no. It's Christmas Eve. There's work to be done preparing tonight's Elf and Fairy Feast. Oh, yes, the Midnight Elf and Fairy Feast. On Christmas Eve. With music and singing and lanterns. Yes, and those lanterns don't hang themselves up to work. Stop, Mr Elf. It's about time you had a rest. A rest? You've been working hard all year. Just sit down and relax for five minutes. I can give you three. You work too hard. Elves like working hard. And I'm an elf. <gasps> Oh, dear, you really must relax. Just say, I'm on holiday. Well, all right. I'm on holiday. Ah, that's nice. Hello, wise old elf speaking. Ho, ho, ho. It's Father Christmas here. Oh, Mr. Christmas. We seem to be missing some toys. I can't find Box 571. Box 571? I need those toys before tonight, or some children will not get their Christmas presents. Never fear, Mr. Christmas. We will get the box to you. I will deliver it personally. Box 571? It could be anywhere. We'll never find it. Is it this box, Dad? The one that says Box 571? What? Well done, Ben. You found it. To the elf plane. We leave immediately. Well, that was a nice holiday while it lasted. Are you going back to the North Pole? Can we come? Can we, Dad? Please? Please, Mr. Elf. I don't mind who comes, but we must leave straight away. Well, hey! Brilliant! I'll just get my wands back from King Thistle and then... There's no time for that, Nanny. We need to get these toys to Father Christmas right away. Elf honour is at stake. Ready for takeoff, Captain. Everyone on board. Ben, it's snowing. Oh, wow! Snow! You see, my snow globe is never wrong. Hmm. What do all these buttons do? Don't touch anything, please, Nanny Plum. Wind the engine. Righty ho! Ready for takeoff. Two. 
We're not going to play in the snow. We're just dropping off the toy box and coming straight home. So we won't meet Father Christmas? Good gracious, no. We're on a mission. There'll be no playing in the snow and no meeting Father Christmas. Join us in our next episode when we play in the snow and meet Father Christmas. 